So Freddie, how did it feel to launch yourself off of a mountain in your freshly rebuilt supercar yesterday? You ever been in a car accident? Yes. That's what it felt like. Oh, 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 oh! Auto Tempest had challenged us to buy a wrecked and repaired supercar for the price of a new Corvette Z06. We had tested the high speed capability of our hoopty grade exotics. I had beaten a 17 year old child in a $500 car in the fairest of fights and Freddy stayed on track long enough to claim the highest top speed of the day. Our next challenge had been offered by the Ticket Clinic, and it was to drive our brightly colored supercar south to the mecca of automotive excellence, Monterey Car Week, and to make it there without requiring their services. If we got a ticket in California, even though our licenses were from other states, we would still be facing costly fines, insurance premium increases, points on our licenses, risks of suspension, and possible jail time. Of course, if we had, the Ticket Clinic's lawyers would be there as the perfect partners in our fight. The stakes were set, the destination was targeted, and the game was afoot. Unfortunately, it wasn't much of a game at all. Hmm. Come to Car Week, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Come see our world-famous traffic. This is why we finish cannonballs in the middle of the night. Thankfully, my seats are soft and comfy. How about you, Freddie? So this has the uh, carbon-backed P1 seats, which are terrible. They're very, very bad. My back is not doing well, and my hips are being ground into a fine paste. Tell me your body mass index isn't where you want it to be without telling me your body mass index isn't where you want it to be. Listen, he who has dead knees should not throw uh, glass stones or something. Now it's starting to open up. Here we go. Oh, yeah. A break in traffic meant that we could actually try to make good time towards Monterey. It also gave my McLaren an opportunity to show how well built it was. buzzing that has just developed in my car and I don't know where it is. Like a vibration buzzing or an electronic buzzing? Like a vibration, like some trim is uh, hitting some other trim and it's just uh, at a certain RPM at a certain frequency. Wonder how that could have happened. This has been two years in the making. I've spent the most money on this car that I've spent on anything ever, including my house. That gold exhaust, gold horsey, and gold wheels. Tyler, I feel like you need a single gold tooth to be the driver. <laughs> yeah, well, Freddie golded out his McLaren, but it is a little more tasteful than this one, isn't it? I don't like the gold accents on the bumper of Freddie's car when it's sitting still, but I have to say when it's moving, it's actually all right. I like the gold accents on my car. Yeah, and when you were pulling off panels to fix your leak, I saw the Tavares tape too. I wouldn't talk about panels coming off on that car. Everything's falling apart in your Ferrari. I've had some high mile Ferraris and they really do degrade a lot more quickly than you'd imagine. I've driven one of these with 2,000 miles. It drives exactly the same. I admit it doesn't look the same, but it drives the same. My back, ow. We were finally moving forward at a steady pace until we were reminded of California's favorite pastime. And now it's a parking lot. Well, at least we don't have to worry about needing the ticket clinic's services. Ah! Ah! My back! Ah! <laughs> All right, guys, this constant, like, stop and go at seven miles an hour, my back really actually does hurt. And what would you like us to do about that, Freddie? Every time Tyler said, hey, I need to go pee, we always, like, did a detour or something, or if you're 
car, managed to hit a tree. We always stop for you, but if my spine is about to become severed because of this wonderful P1 seat that I have in my car, then, you know, that that's a bridge too far. I am starting to cook in traffic a little bit without air conditioning, so I wouldn't mind switching. I'll drive your McLaren, Freddie. You can get in the hot 458, and Tyler, you can enjoy my air conditioning. You want to pull up and onto the shoulder? No, we just do a fire drill in traffic right now. Hop it out. All right. Freddie, you looked a little stiff there. Tyler, there's a there's a lot of warning lights in this car. Well, if you just ignore those, it drives just like a new one. Tyler, if you bring one more car on car track that's supposed to have carbon ceramics and doesn't, I'm not doing this again. Did you almost crash into the back of your own car? That I did, my friend. So you're lying again. The brakes on that car are fine. The 456 had normal brakes. You are just a liar. The pedals are very close together. So much, in fact, that I had to take my shoes off to drive this car. But the worst thing about this is those brakes. When you drive into people's cars, you point out things that are broken that are absolutely not broken He's or so not bad. wrong with their cars. Every single time you pick it apart. Freddie's life on the internet before YouTube was just trolling people, which is exactly what he's doing now. <laughs> Tyler, I'm gonna say this very nicely. Your car is not good. You're making that up. You've driven the car 20 feet. It's traffic 10 miles an hour. You have no idea. Tyler, I know cars, okay? I know cars. Just shut your mouth before I shut it for you. you. I'd like to see you try. Can I make your window go up on the passenger side or no? It only goes to the position where, or where it would be if the door was opening. Wonderful. Pull over, I'll fix it. It doesn't really matter. Oh, oh it, just, it literally just heard you were coming and it closed itself. I am not kidding. That's my baby. <laughs> Please don't let him come back. Please, Ed, you drive. All right, here we go. So 2015 was the first model year for the 675 LT in the US. That was the last year that I sold exotic cars. And we were a McLaren, Lamborghini, Lotus, Aston Martin dealer. And so I sold a lot of these. I really think it is the best looking car that McLaren has done since they came back to the market. No, they're not reliable. Yes, they rattle like crazy and all of that. But when they work, they are utterly brilliant. And this, I mean, Freddie did a really, really good job in specking it out. It was a Herculean task to try to put one of these cars back together, especially after the severity of the accident that it had. But the fact that we are driving it hundreds of miles on track to Car Week around in traffic at high speed, low speed, all that, it's truly, truly impressive. And it's a testament to what he can do as a mechanic. So my hat is off and uh, I doubted him every step of the way. Oh, that's fast. But I'm already bored. The car's fine. It really is fine. And it makes sense to buy an Audi R8. I mean, if you want nationwide dealer network when it comes to repairs, reliability, if it's your only fun car, or really could be your only daily driver, you can get an Audi R8. this thing does. That's a good noise. Woo. Okay, Tyler, I, I get it, I get it. This car can boogie. And the seats are very cushy. Sadly, they're a little gelatinous and soiled from my sweat, but sorry about that. The seats are soiled with sweat. There's DNA all over the buttons because they're all sticky and there's hair and it's it's a uh, it's like fairly gross in here dude oh my god 
more room available? Oh my gosh. Oh wow, look at that. Freddy, I really like these seats. Good, we can put them in your car. Did you get any commentary from the factory about the extent to which the car was damaged and the fact that you were putting it back together? Yes, but not officially. I've had a bunch of people uh, come out of the woodwork and say, hey, don't tell anybody that I told you this, but you're doing a good job, or here's some parts support, or if you ever need anything, uh, let me know. But McLaren themselves officially have said nothing. I am dead to them. How do you like my Audi, Tyler? I think he's asleep. That could be. I fell asleep. <laughs> Yes, if you were actually wanting a daily driver, you could buy this, but then you'd always be looking at the Ferrari McLaren in front of you and wishing you had that. There is some truth to that. And I don't follow McLarens very much. Of course, they do the P1 and the Senna, but, but then otherwise it's like iPhones, the 3G, 5G, S7, 8, 9, 10. I can't really pay attention or tell the difference. It's really easy, Tyler, okay? So first they came out with the MP412C, then they called it a 12C, then they had the 650S, uh, and then they had one with a roof scoop that only came out for like... I muted it. I don't care to know. I, I really don't. A lot of revised things. After that, they made the 570S, which was a sports series, not the super series. Is he still going? And then... Uh, he is still going. Uh, they had the 720S, uh, then the 720S Spider, then the 765 LT. As much as one could enjoy the tinnitus that Freddie and his taped together car were giving me, I was truly thrilled as we made it into Monterey. We quickly discovered, however, that our supercars were not so rare or special after all. That's when a new challenge came to mind and I relate it to my friends. With all of these incredible cars converging and their owners undoubtedly interested in something a bit more comfortable, we should see who could trade up into the most impressive car. Though men of taste we were, so were the folks we were trying to shrewdly negotiate with. I have a 458. I always wanted to try out a 488. Can we trade keys for like an hour? I'm, I'm serious. So my McLaren is up there. Can we trade cars for like um, like just one hour? Would you mind trading cars with me? I've got a beautiful Audi R8. You could drive it for an hour or so. I'll take this for a quick spin. I will not jump it like a valet driver. Dude, I believe that's a Jag XK120. It's one of my dream cars. Is this a 120? Yes, it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I have a Ferrari 458. We're trying to trade cars. Can we trade keys for like an hour? <laughs> Really? He's, oh, he's joking. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Hi, hi, um, I have a McLaren just down the road. Would you like to trade cars for about, oh, okay, all right, uh, no, nope. That was, I think they were a little creeped out. So I'm gonna pass this time. Well, thank but you thank anyway. You. I, I understand, it's yeah. gorgeous, good thank luck. You. Wax thank on, you. wax off. What's hey, up? How are you? Dan, <laughs> normal guy supercar. Hey, man. Okay, a familiar face. Yes. Very, very good. I have got a 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus, and uh, how about we swap for a little while? You could drive it, it'll be all modern with its paddles. Uh, I need to trace keys with somebody for like an hour. I have the 458 here. This is the six speed manual swapped 5 by 9 It is. Can we? A great car, but I just got this spot. Yeah, so no? It's. I gotta be somewhere, man. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Jeez. That's loud. I have a McLaren just up the road. Would you trade cars for about an hour? Oh, would well, you think your dad would mind if I just drove it for like just a little bit? And you could drive my R8. This is very pretty, a Monza SP2. I think he'd kill me. Well, I mean, you know, there's worse things to happen. It's not broken down, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh. As Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan or Nancy Kerrigan probably said, you miss 100% of the shots you shoot in the wrong direction. 
So we headed for the greener pastures of 17 Mile Drive and found much greater success. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ferrari 812 GTS. It has 788 horsepower and it costs the better part of $800,000. This is the perfect car for this challenge. At least it was. At least it was. Oh my, Ed? Do you have a spine anymore? I left it back at the R8. Uh-huh. This, they built this one. Hold on, I got, I got, I got you, I got you. There you, there you go, there you go. Okay. Uh, yes. How's, how's your knees? Oh, they are lovely. You look, look shorter. Look at this. I'll come back to height in a moment. Dude. Like when you, whew. Oh my goodness. Oh. This is clean, like even. It, it is exceptional. Now, you know, a Countach is the hero that you're not always supposed to meet, but if you can find one like this, Absolutely. It's a 1985 5000 Quattro valve, but it's a downdraft. Oh, yes. Tyler! Oh, it fits you so well. Look at that. I'm going to call shenanigans this on all this. This guy didn't want to drive a 458. Did you steal that? No. Did you have to use a firearm? Checkmate. This makes no sense. I don't, I don't like 2005 this. 2005 Porsche Carrera GT, an amazing, timeless classic, an incredible machine. Well, Freddie, look at well, yours. All right, this is new, it's fast, it's comfortable. It's $800,000 and it's way faster than both your cars. Well, that doesn't really matter, does it? Because look at this. I mean, this is the cleanest Countach I think I've ever seen. He was on his way to Quail and I convinced him that he might enjoy some air conditioning, some comfort, some room to sit up straight. And uh, he took me up on it. It also has a You're little bump in the back head, which it means... It does. It's got uh, the sarcophagus in there. It's a downdraft. Whoa. That now, is... It's not a U.S. downdraft car. That's like 16, 18 cars. It is a European, freshly imported, and I mean, obviously over-restored. I mean, this is well beyond what the factory ever would have uh -huh. done with a Countach. I don't fit uh -huh. at all, but and I've never yeah. driven a downdraft Countach, and I was certainly going to take him up on the opportunity. So he has spinal compression. You have a clutch that is very hard to manage. It's uh, fine. I have a car that was made in the last 10 years, and it should be no problem to drive. So I think we should just go out and drive them. Absolutely. Let's yeah. go. Give me a moment. It's, oh, we got oh, it's, it's a thing. I can see him. Ed do it Lambo takes, Yoda. Yeah, it takes I wanna, I wanna some contortion. This. So this it, part goes in first, then my head goes. Yeah, remove the knees. Goes in like this. Ow. Size 14, not anticipated. It's okay. Are you in? I'm in. Look at me. I'm in. I'm, I'm totally in. Okay. I have tweed. There's oh, tweed look how seats. hard it is to get in my car. That's not oh. the interior. Look, look at me. It's, it's look. Hound's oh, tooth, I'm Tyler. in, guys. I'm in the car. Wow, that was dying. difficult. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, pulling out in a Carrera GT. All right, let's piss off some golfers for a second here. Whoa! Okay, that is a noise. Holy moly! What? Okay, well, it's been a while since I worked a manual here. Ah. A 2005 Porsche Carrera GT, one of the best cars ever. V10, naturally aspirated, 600 horsepower, going to a six-speed manual transmission. They call this the last analog supercar. Now, there was a period where these were incredibly undervalued, and there was a bit of a stigma with the whole Paul Walker deal. He was killed in one of these on a drive, unfortunately, uh, but that is since well past and they have appreciated well past the point of uh, this YouTuber's salary, unfortunately. So this is as close as I'm gonna get to owning one, but if I did, you bet I'd be bringing it to Monterey for car week. 
I got to ride in one, uh, but not just anyone. Jay Leno's, I was actually on his show, he blindfolded me, and I had to guess which car I was in. Three cars, one of them was a Carrera GT, and I knew instantly with that naturally aspirated V10 in the back and a manual shifter up here, but uh, when I went to reach for the shifter, Jay Leno's hand was on it, so I kind of like held his hand in an awkward way. Anyway, it was still an amazing experience. We ate hummus afterward in his garage, and he took me for a tour. Uh, I'll never forget it, but now I'm driving one. Ed and Freddie did really well. They certainly traded up two fantastic, amazing cars, but they are not icons. They are not a Porsche Carrera GT. The last naturally aspirated, big engine, manual shift car that money could buy without any electronic nannies keeping you on the road, like traction control or active suspension. This thing is just old school, but 600 horsepower and the design is modern, but really timeless. It's one of the best cars ever. Ed looks absolutely ridiculous in that thing. Uh, I wonder if I look that terrible in it, but I am two inches shorter than him and just barely fit in a Countach. And Freddy, well, Freddy looks like he's in an exotic rental for the very first time. But if I had to guess, that Countach, even though it's a fancy downdraft, and that A12, even with a special roof, uh, this car's worth more than those two combined. It's Okay, I just reminded myself of that, and now I'm a little scared. It's not often you get to drive around Car Week for a little while and feel like you're in the coolest car you've seen, but that's been my experience the last little bit. It sounds perfect. I mean, listen. Oh, oh, yes. There's nothing like a naturally aspirated V12. You just hear it breathing, and it is wonderful. Freddie can rave all he wants about his 675 LT with its turbos, but this is what a supercar is. Oh, listen to this car! Now, when you drive one of these things in a spirited way, you're supposed to carry something to break your way out, because if you flip the thing over, you can't get out. But, I mean, honestly, though, what a way to die. <laughs> they catch on fire quickly, so it doesn't last long. But this is easily in the top 1% of Countach, is probably the best one. I would not rather be in either of those cars. This thing is magnificent. Oh, what a treat. It accelerates beautifully, it brakes beautifully. The steering is extremely precise and everything that I dislike being electronic in the R8, I love how analog it is in this car. No, I don't fit. Yes, I can't see. Sure, I have cramps in every joint from my neck to my ankles, but it's car week, I'm by the ocean, and I'm in a million dollar Lamborghini. It doesn't get a whole lot better than this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There are a few things in life more perfect than a big V12 Ferrari with a ton of horsepower with the top down on a California beach road. This makes so much sense. And cruising in this GTS, a Gran Turismo Sport, is exactly what I needed. <laughs> wow! Okay, all right, there we go. There we go, that's, that's some power. So that is 788 horsepower from a naturally aspirated V12. There's no turbos, this thing is just big and torquey. Now the car that Tyler has, the Carrera GT, that is a little bit smaller, a little bit less torquey. That sounds great. And Ed in his Countach, that is an icon, but I know for a fact that he is extremely uncomfortable. And that's one thing people don't really understand about supercars, because you think they're one way, but when you actually drive them, they're another way. They're a lot less comfortable and a lot less drivable than you think. Definitely for the Countach, a little bit less for the Carrera GT, but in this car, this is a car you can drive every single day. I am super comfortable in here. It's really nice. It smells good. I'm not inhaling my own fumes. You get just as many looks in this thing as you get in any other car. So from where I'm sitting, it doesn't make any sense why you would get anything else. 
<laughs> this thing just bolts. <laughs> okay. Radio just turned on for no reason. Good. In a sea of the very, very rare, this may look a bit humdrum, a bit too common because this is a car that was, for all intents and purposes, made on an assembly line, albeit in the Ferrari factory, but an assembly line nonetheless. But what that means is that this car has the fit and finish that those two cars don't. This car is also gonna have parts availability. This car is gonna have some really good reliability. It's not gonna have the kind of quirks and features, to borrow Doug DeMuro's phrase, to prevent me from wanting to drive it. I think as far as modern classics, those two are definitely iconic, but this thing, this thing is definitely on the list in about 10 years time. Now, even though this car costs $800,000, and yes, I am very nervous, it's not my car. I'm looking out for rock chips and making sure I'm not scraping anything. It is the low man on the totem pole here because that Carrera GT is worth almost double and the Countach behind me is worth a little bit more than a million dollars. So we are in good company, but unfortunately I have lost this challenge. Doesn't feel like losing though. Not even a little bit. <laughs> I love car week. <laughs> as much as it pained us to do it, we gave our borrowed cars back to their overjoyed owners and made our way to our rental home on 17 Mile Drive, ready for a quiet and restful night. Oh, yes. Lamborghini Gallardo LP570 Superleggera came out in the U.S. for model year 2011, but there were five U.S. press cars built for 2010, and this one the factory forgot that they left with me when I worked at Lamborghini Atlanta. I drove it more than 4,000 miles and I had to talk myself out of a whole lot of speeding tickets when I got pulled over in it. But today when you get a ticket, it's more important than ever to fight everyone, and the ticket clinic is the perfect partner in that fight. Check them out now at the link in the description below to make sure that you've got the perfect partner in your fight against your next speeding ticket. You could be facing costly insurance premium increases, fines, jail time, license suspension, points on your license, and they can help you avoid all of that. I think, I th I think I'm about to get a ticket because uh, I want to buy one of these cars and fix it up. Fix huh? it? Yeah, yeah that's this, what you do. It just, it, it, build it better. It needs, a, it needs a few things. Maybe this, not this one. This started out better than your McLaren. It did. 